This episode of the Sleuth Cast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company, who is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company located in Harrisburg, Ohio. They are a world class hand roasted micro batch coffee, fresh roasted after you're ordered. They are fair trade certified, USDA organic, and integrity is their core value to do the right thing, even when no one is looking. They get their high quality coffee beans directly from countries such as Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Ethiopia, and much, much more. Be sure to hit up their website, ironbeancoffee.com, to find out more information about them and all the delicious coffee that Jared will talk about in the middle of the episode. Again, that is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? What is up? What is up? What is up? What is up? Discord. Um, what's up? That's I don't know. I got nothing else to say. How about the basketball Google. Buckeyes? Woohoo! No, good about talk about that real briefly here. But how about the coaching news. carousel that's going on too, Jared? Yeah. Um, you know what, Kyle? We should maybe just start the episode. All right. All right. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. A welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? You're all right over here. How are you doing today, Jared? Uh, you know, I don't have any complaints. I'm doing good over here. Um, you know, it was it was nice. It was nice to take the edge off a bit. Take the edge off a bit. Get a get a big Buckeye upset. Oh, knock it off, that? Duke. Number one, Duke. How about that? That's oh, they but, used to be number one. If you know what I'm saying, used to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. 70, 71 to sixty six. And I said, I said in our um, in our Discord during the game that Ohio State needs to keep Duke under seventy five points in order to win this game. Well, they kept them under seventy. Just a great, great win for this Buckeyes. Definitely was not expecting it. We, New Duke had a fantastic team, and especially in that first half, just all the turnovers, all of the missed free throws, like, oh, this is just going to come back to bite them in the butt. And you know what? They stuck through it. Duke went on a big, cold streak to the end of the game there, and Buckeyes pulled an upset. Yeah, but here's the thing. The other thing I was saying during the game, and by the way, this was our very first Buckeye basketball social screen. And if you don't know what the social screen is, you should join our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. This is our very first uh, basketball social screen. And I was saying during the game, one, no matter how good or bad Ohio State seemed to be doing, they were always down somewhere between like 7 and 12 points. Sometimes I'd be thinking, oh, they're doing terrible. Maybe down like, you know, somewhere between 7 and 12 points. Oh, they're doing really great now. And they're down somewhere between 7 to 12 points. So, you know, you just sort of hung around, hung around, hung around. But as far as like, Things coming back to bite someone in the bud later. I kept saying, man, Duke's getting a lot of fouls. Duke's getting a lot of fouls. Zed Key was forcing a lot of fouls. He fouled out one of their big guys. And after he left, the other big guy come, came in and he already had four fouls. So even he never ends up fouling out, but, you know, had to play Zed Key a little bit looser. And Kyle, dare I say it, I think we have our number two on the team now. Like... Without a doubt, without a doubt, we know who the leader, who the number one is on the team now. But Kyle, I feel like Ohio State finally has their big guy in Zed Key. And I feel like Ohio State finally has their their big man presence with, with Zed Key, especially with Liddell playing. You know, I feel like he sort of played the five for a while. And now he's playing more of a, a strong forward. So, which is, I think, where he probably should be. And I, I feel like this this is much, much better. I'm I'm I 
you know, it, we're, we're still in the afterglow of it, but I'm looking forward to this Buckeye season. I think as long as Zed Key and EJ Liddell can continue to play at a high level, they clean up some of the, you know, freshman behavior by some of the freshmen and start getting more consistent, less turnover-y, turnover-y uh, contributions from them. I think Ohio State can maybe, you know, we don't want to peak too early. We don't want to peak too early, but by the time by the time we get to like February, March, I think this might be a pretty decent team. Get those freshmen some experience to aid Zed Key and and EJ Liddell, and I think this is a good team. Yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, there's there's a lot of Ohio State's been pretty fortunate with the transfer portal here. Got some key additions to this team here, but the key thing in this game here, Zed Key. Half, the key is Zed Key. In the first half, Ohio State had nine turnovers. And then for the for the game itself, they had 12. So they only had three turnovers that second half, and that definitely showed it. And Ohio State was 30% free throw and ended up 50%, which is still terrible in the free throw line. But they definitely cleaned it up in that second half, and it, and it showed. It was just fantastic, fantastic win. And I saw some stat out here, Jared. Of the past 11 net games, maybe it's only 11 times, Ohio State has faced the number one team in the country. Yeah. Ohio State has won eight of those 11 games. Kyle, you want to see a crazy stat? Mm Mm-hmm. You want to see an absolutely crazy stat? This is from... Hit it, uh, hit it. This is from Andrew Lind. I only only asked you twice because I was trying to pull up the tweet. I was killing time, Kyle. That's what a podcaster does. They keep the the show moving. Um, Andrew Lind. Uh, long time guy on the Ohio State beat. Uh, the last time Ohio State lost to Michigan in football, the Buckeyes basketball team hosted Duke the following Tuesday. The Blue Devils came into Columbus this. Oh, uh, excuse me. The Blue Devils come into Columbus this Tuesday too. The last two times Ohio State lost to Michigan in football, the Buckeyes basketball team beat Duke the following Tuesday. So. What's the lesson to be learned here? Stop scheduling Duke. For the sake of the football team. Yeah. Stop scheduling Duke. And one last last stat here, and then we'll move on, Jared. Only okay. four teams have a winning record over Duke. Okay. And one of them is Ohio State. What is that record? Only f- exactly 500. Okay. All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Ohio State is exactly 500. Kentucky is exactly 500. And UNC and Arizona have a slight um, above 500 um, record against Duke. So only four teams of all college football. Ohio State's one of them. So we'll take that. All right, Kyle. One more piece of Buckeye news, and we're going to get into our sloop picks. Um, Ohio State today picked up their uh, 2022 quarterback, uh, the Previous 2022 quarterback uh, reclassified to 2021. Uh, You may have heard of him. His name's Quinn Ewers. So Ohio State, uh, you know, for the sake of depth, if nothing else, went and picked up their second or I guess their first quarterback of the 2020, uh, the 2022 class. His name's Devin Brown. Uh, Late rising sort of guy. Uh, This sort of feels like when Ohio State went out and picked up, um, How am I going to blank on his name when we were literally talking about it? My goddamn ADHD. When we were literally just talking about it during the, during the, um, yeah, Matt Baldwin. Thank you, Stuart. We were literally just talking about it before the show started. Then my ADHD had to (laughs) kick in. Uh, Couldn't think of his name. But yeah, Matthew Baldwin kind of feels like that recruitment where, you know, they lost out on a guy late, although they didn't really lose out on Quinn Ewers, right? So then they went and they picked up this guy who sort of came from nowhere as a senior and... You know, he's going to add some quality depth to the team. And, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the transfers and everything else. And quite frankly, you know, when you went and pick up a guy like Chris Olave, you kind of thought of him as like a depth kid from California, too. And, you know, you see how that turns out. So you just never know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as far it, as it, like it, recruiting stars and recruiting rankings go, he's uh, not quite matching up with the rest of the guys in the room. But like I said, th- well, those things don't always I- matter. I want to counter that, Jared. I want to counter that. Okay. This is a great, great piece here from Bill Landis. Another, another great, um, Buckeye Uh, beat that you should definitely follow. 
Yeah, uh, um, he writes for The Athletic. Yep. Devin Brown, of the the top 15 highest rated quarterbacks in the 24-7 sports composite between 2020 and 2022, Devin Brown comes in at the 15th highest. And above them, C.J. Stroud, Kyle McCord, and Quinn Ewers in there too. So right, not it, shabby. It's no, not it's shabby just, at all. Yeah, it's it's not that by any means that Brown is like bad or any. No, 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 no. By no means. It's just that the bar for the Ohio State quarterback room is so insanely high right now. Yeah, it is. Okay, okay Kyle. You want to pick, pick some games? Yeah, I was just about to say that. Let's let's pick some games. Yeah, he was. A, yes, thank you, Stuart. He was a USC commit. USC got. Uh, stole for lack of a better word the five star i believe number one overall in the class uh kid who was at oklahoma uh obviously the oklahoma usc situations well trotted territory you don't need me to explain it to you but uh number two overall Stewart says uh yeah so it's that that is what that is i thought he became number one after ewers um reclassified Oh, Hunter's number one? How long has that been true? Is that a recent change? You know what? It's fine. We're moving forward. Um, all right. The Yeah, let's pick some games, Kyle. Let's pick right, sure. some games. All right, sure. So let us go ahead and start with the first game, and that is the Pac-12 Championship Friday night. So, yes, this isn't Saturday. This is Friday night, 8 p.m., ABC. You got... Oregon taken on Utah and Utah Jared is a two and a half point favorite in this game. By the way, Kyle, who, I'm who sorry. Got, I'm sorry. I need to, this? I need to jump back to the Devin Brown thing real quick. I, cause I actually just saw the tweet you were talking about and he's literally, uh, Devin Brown is literally 15 hundredths composite points behind cj stroud 15 thousandths uh yes 15 thousandths yes yes it is <laughs> all right sorry kyle uh yeah uh pac 12 is that what we're doing first right oregon utah utah is a two and a half point go okay uh this game's being played on friday <laughs> night it should be noted uh yeah uh, i have Kyle, I have here uh, Utah. I I think Utah wins. Two and a half points isn't enough to scare me off of my scare me off of my ledge. That's not the correct thing. That's not the correct expression. But screw it, not enough to scare me off of my ledge. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick Utah. Two and a half points, not intimidating enough for me. So I'm going with the pick 'em. I'm going with Utah. Yeah, I agree. I I I feel like Utah is on a just. The way that they've ended the season here, I just, I like the trend that Utah is here. I think it's going to be a close one, but like Jared said, it's pretty much a pick em here. So I'll, I'll go with the original U, Utah Utes. Okay, right, Kyle. Up here, Jared. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yes. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. All right. All right. The next up, next game here, Jared. We're moving on to Saturday noon ABC. It is the Big 12 Championship featuring Baylor and Oklahoma State. No Oklahoma this year, but the Cowboys are a five and a half point favorite in this game. It's that's a that's a really good line. Five and a half points here. I I, I gotta go with the better defense in, in this game here. I gotta go with the better defense. I think. I think Oklahoma State is, I think they're just a much, much better team than Baylor. I, I, I feel pretty good with my pick of picking Oklahoma State to cover that five and a half in, in this game. I'm, re I'm real on the fence on this one, uh, because while I agree with everything you said there, the five and a half feels like just slightly rich. <laughs> Excuse me. It feels just very slightly rich. Um, I would have been much happier at like three and a half. 
Um, I, I, while I do think Oklahoma State wins this, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pick Baylor with the five and a half point buffer. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. Next up here is what conference is this? I don't even know. <laughs> um, it is Utah State and San Diego State. It's the Mountain you know West, Kyle. It's the Mountain it West. It is the Mountain West. Thank you. Drawing a blank there. Uh, San Diego State is a five and a half point favorite in this game here. Uh, I, just like with the Big 12 championship game, I I feel that San Diego State's a far superior team than Utah State. So I don't have much to say about this game. I'll, I'll pick San Diego State here. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, the, I, I think this is maybe, maybe my favorite pick of the weekend. I, I think that the five and a half points here is a steal. I, the fact that you can get this for under a touchdown to me is a steal. So I, I feel like, you know, later on, I think we have a pair of games that are about 10 and a half points. And I feel like this is where this one should have been. I feel like I would have mm-hmm. taken San Diego state all the way up to like eight and a half, nine and a half points. So, yeah, if, if you're gonna let me have San Diego state for five and a half, I will, I will, uh, I will go ahead and take that by the way. Uh, uh, Stewart's looking into Devin Brown down in our chats there. Um, he said, dude seems legit. Yeah, he absolutely is. No, like, I, I hope I'm, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not misunderstood there. He's very, very, very good. It's just sort of in the land of five stars. The four star is blind. I'm really mixing my metaphors tonight. Um, and by the, he also says he's our second player from Utah ever. Ever? Is that true? And the better question is, who's the other, who's the first one? I thought of a few names when you said that, but my mind all immediately went to like Nevada Bishop Gorman players. I went to like Haskell Garrett, but that's Nevada. Okay. Sorry, Kyle. uh, Next up. Yep. All right. Let's go and do another one. And this is the Should we do the ad break first? No, Before we'll, we do, we'll do Alabama, Georgia, we'll, we'll do we'll do this one and then the ad break here. Okay. So next is oh, the Tommy Togi. Tommy Togi is the other guy from Utah. Gotcha. Right, next up is the SAC uh, championship game with Georgia and Alabama. 4 p.m. CBS and Georgia is pretty much a touchdown favorite, six and a half points favorite in this game. Now, Jared, I'm going to let you pick first here, but okay. Alabama's definitely been struggling. They're winning, winning games. They kind of remind me of like Oklahoma, especially earlier in the year where they were, they weren't looking impressive, but you know, they're, they're winning games here and Georgia's just shutting teams out left and right here. So do you think Georgia will cover here or do you think Bama is going to keep this close and possibly even pull the upset here? You know, this might be a stupid pick. I acknowledge this right away. This might be a stupid pick, but I don't remember the last time I had the opportunity and I'm going to call it an opportunity to bet on Bama with a touchdown buffer. I'm getting a, I'm getting, I'm being given six and a half points to pick Bama. That just feels like an opportunity too good to pass up. And I'm just, I don't think, I don't think Georgia is, oh, Kyle stating that Tommy Togai was not the player from Georgia and that it's Brandon Bowen. Everyone remember Brandon Bowen? Um. So yeah, the, I don't know. It's just, I I have to, right? Like you're getting a six and a half point buffer to take Alabama. I feel like you have to, I really just feel like, I feel like you have to, I don't think George is nearly as iron tested as Alabama is, as I think the sec East is pretty weak. It's pretty weak. 
Uh, who out of the SEC, who's who's Georgia's best win right now? Ooh, Clemson? Question. It's Clemson, yep. right? Uh, it also mm-hmm. might be Kentucky. Are, are, you, are you trying to say to me Kentucky? It's not Florida. It's not Tennessee. Who's their best win right now? I'm just, I know they're putting up these impressive stats. I get it. I, their, their defense is insane, putting up insane stats, but it's Alabama and I'm getting a touchdown. I'm not passing up on that. So who was it? Alabama. Alabama. Hey, you, you're giving me a touchdown to pick Nick Saban's Alabama. Yeah, it, it definitely just seems like it's so much I just want to pick Georgia here, but Alabama will come out and they'll make it a good game here. They'll make it a good game. So I agree. I think I think I think Bama will cover here. Maybe even pull the upset. But yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take Bama to cover. For least. the record, I still think Georgia wins. For the record, I still think Georgia wins. Um, but I am gonna I mean I am gonna take my six and a half points and run. Um Georgia? I still think Georgia wins, or are you just are you just saying you're also picking Georgia, Stuart? Uh by the way, the real bet here, in my opinion, the real bet here. Kyle, what do you think the over under is? Stuart, what do you think the over under is? I'm going to say 45. Hey, Stuart also said 45. It is 49. 49. Bet that under. under. Take that under. Yep. Also, don't real life gamble. Kyle, it's time to do another ad read. Uh, Today's episode is sponsored by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Why? Because of course it is. Of course, it's sponsored by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I'm going to pull up the Iron Bean Coffee site, and we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about a coffee. Let's see. I'm just, I'm going to hit the random button here, and we're going to talk about the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Um, live life fully. Do not go gentle. Rage Against the Dying of the Light. This is more than just a bag of coffee. It's a bag of determination. It's fair trade certified. It's USDA organic. You know you're getting the most morally upstanding coffee you can get from farm to your cup. Cup? Your cup. I don't know why I pronounce cup like that. Uh, there are many coffee producing regions in the mountains of Colombia, all with slightly unique attributes and flavor tendencies. The coffee we've been getting from this region. Uh, lately has been unique and exceptional. Uh, The Rage Against the Dying of the Light uh, is unusually sweet. It's not sweetened, but just the the flavor of the coffee is is unusually sweet. It has notes of cherry and milk chocolate, a little bit of orange, and maybe a little bit of rose petal in there. Um, that might lead you to believe it's a light, it has a light crispy body, but it's actually has a medium body and a nice long finish, leaving you plenty of time to enjoy the smooth balance of flavors and aromas. What? You don't want this coffee? You want this coffee. Uh, if you don't want that coffee, maybe you want a flavored coffee. They have a huge selection of flavored coffees. And I'm going to go ahead and check the flavored coffees real quick. We're going to see if anything's gone out of stock, Kyle. That's what we're going to do. Because you guys need to hurry. The The cinnamon just got back in stock. You don't know how long it's going to be there. You never, never know. Uh, the Because the Dylan's Grog and the Mom's Carrot Cake still sold out. But the uh, seasonal favorite, the white chocolate peppermint, still available. Still available. You better jump on that one while you can. Uh, and a bunch of other amazing flavored, not flavored coffees available to you over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee. It's America's local coffee roaster. What game is next, Kyle? We have the American Conference, Houston and Cincinnati. Cincinnati is a 10 and a half point favorite in this game. Who do you got, Jared? Oh, Stewart's going with Houston. Um, I I hardly disagree. I no, not at all. I think 
I don't think 10 and a half points, <laughs> excuse me, is enough to scare me off here. I look at this team. I look at Cincinnati uh, of their past five wins. All but one of them have been by more than 10 and a half points. Uh, I, and I don't think Utah State is some sort of exception. Like, I don't I don't feel like there's some sort of monster that's going to be the exception to that rule uh, that is going to somehow. I said Utah or what the hell did I say? I'm still talking about Utah. I still have Utah State on the mind. Houston. I don't think Houston's some sort of magical exception to that rule. Um, no, I don't think Fickle's distracted looking at Notre Dame. Um, I, I think, I think Cincinnati's in great shape here. Again, looking at their recent wins, they're winning them easily. They're winning them with lots of points, uh, with lots of buffer 10 points, not enough to scare me off here. I'm 100% going with, with Cincinnati. I hard disagree, disagree, Jared. I, th I think Houston will make this a closer game. I think Cincinnati wins comfortably, but but I'll take Houston with the points here, though. Uh, Houston has very, very similar numbers and is beating teams very similar to Cincinnati. They have the one loss to a to a Texas Tech in the very first game of the of the season. And ever since, Houston hasn't looked back either. They've been winning most of the games convincingly to their yardage for offense and letting up on defense is very, very similar to Cincinnati. So I think this is going to be a lot closer here. So give me the Cougars, Jared, to cover. Cougars versus Bearcats, which, by the way, might be the same animal. Just going to, going to toss that out there. All right. All right. Next up, Jared. Nope, that's a Bobcat. All right. Next up, Jared, we <laughs> have... Mix we up my Bobcats and my Bearcats. We have the ACC. This is a game I will not be watching because yes, I'm sure it's going to be boring. It's, <laughs> it is Pittsburgh and Wake Forest. Yes, that is your two conference champions from the, a, from the great ACC, Division Pittsburgh and champions. Wake Forest. Division champions. And Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh is a three and a half point favorite. Uh, yeah, not the, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going pick them here. I like Pittsburgh. I like Pittsburgh to win. Uh, I think you would have had to get north of like six and a half, seven and a half in order to scare me away from this pick. So I, I like Pitt. I like Pitt by a touchdown. Uh, I like Kenny Pickett, uh, Wake Forest, the, the, the sheen's off the armor. It's, it was fun while it lasted. It's, it's not lasting anymore. When in doubt, pick the quarterback, Kyle. Is this our best quarterback matchup this weekend? It might be. It really <laughs> might be, yes. Stuart would like us to know that uh, Togi is from Idaho. You know, Jared, all season... All, okay, you, you picked Pitt in this game. I did. All, all season, I picked against Pitt. Uh-huh. Every, every, every single game, I've picked against Pitt. And Do you, you know have what, mathematical backup of that, or are you assuming... I'm 99% sure. Okay. <laughs> but you know what, Jared? I'm actually going to change my mind here. I'm actually going to pick Pitt for the final time here. For the first I, and final and only time, Kyle's finally on that Panther train. Yeah, I... Kenny Pickett. Just stop being Kyle. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, pick, I'll pick Pitt here to cover here it. Like Jared said, it's pretty much a pick em here. So, yeah, I'll I'll pick Pitt for this game. Give me that then, Kenny Pickett the magic. And, and then the last game here, Jared. Teams in yellow for the, uh, for the Big Ten championship game. Michigan and Iowa, where Michigan is a 10-and-a-half point favorite. <gasps> Stewart's telling us not to pick. He's saying, don't pick. Are, are, are you not picking or should we not pick? Uh, yeah, I. Kyle. I feel like. I feel like there's one team 
so yeah, we have Michigan minus 10 and a half, right? And my heart is telling me one thing. My head is telling me the other thing. Um, my, my head's telling me that Michigan wins this by more than 10 and a half points. My heart is, um, a child, a heartbroken child who, uh, hates everything that's north of the border and would hate me forever if I picked Michigan right now, because it's, it's so, it's so heartbroken and it's, it's, it's sad. And if I, if I went and I picked Michigan right now, I don't know, I don't know if I could ever forgive me. So even though my head's telling me to pick Michigan, I'm going Iowa just because fuck them. Because I don't give a damn, Kyle. I don't give a damn for the whole state of Michigan. Michigan is scoring 12 more points per game than Iowa. Uh huh. Both teams are averaging almost exactly the same for allowing points. Michigan is yeah. a far superior offense yeah. than Iowa. And they have pretty much almost identical stats for defense here. And everything you're so, saying makes perfectly good logical sense, which mm-hmm. is why my head agrees with you. Yeah. So, I mean, everything is the same, but I see the offense is a 12 point favorite over Iowa. This, this game is a 10 and a half point favorite for Michigan but fuck them. Go Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking Iowa. Oh, Kyle, you had me. <laughs> you you, you totally a, um... you totally had me. I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna lie. You had me in the first half. I, I, I you yeah you totally I got me a, on that I one. A corso on you there. Yeah, no, that was <laughs> that that was great. I you to, you totally fooled me on that one. Oh, good, I'm good. All right, so that's all, that's all seven games here for this weekend here. Um, so let's 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 get into some Ask Sloopcast questions, Jared. Yeah, let's do that. that. Let's get into some lo- Ask Sloopcast questions. A lot of a lot of mix here. Just a, a lot. By of the way, just one. Can I, can I do? Can I one, do one more note on the Michigan game? Because this is when when you yeah. were when you were setting me up here. Hmm? When you were setting me up, I was I was ready with a retort. I, I was ready to come back at you with why you are wrong. And I still want to say it, even though you totally corsoed me. <laughs> Michigan already won their Super Bowl. They are, they already won it. I, I feel like there's a, an, a bit of an emotional letdown headed into the big 10 championship game. And Iowa might not be able to capitalize to the point where they win, but might be able to capitalize to the point where they keep it real damn close. Okay, Kyle. Ask Sloopcast. That's right. what I was going to say to you when I was going to disagree with you before you didn't disagree with me. A lot of variety of questions here. So I'm going to start with, um, since we started with basketball, I'm going to start off with a basketball question here. Who's your Buckeye Zach asks the most important question here. Okay. Is Ohio State a basketball school Stop now? it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you one thing. Both the announcer did it, and then Holly Rowe later did it after the game to Chris Holtman, and I did not appreciate it. Where, where you know, the announcer said it, and then Holly Rowe asked the question where, like, oh, well, you know, the, the students, the campus, the school's hurting after the loss on Saturday. Does it make you feel that, 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 that? Hey, stop asking the basketball quote, basketball coach, football centric questions let him be the basketball coach and my point to that kyle as far as uh, basketball school no no one after an ohio state football game is asking ryan day about the results of a basketball game that's all i'm saying all right next question here from kabuto he starts off by saying i hate to ask it but Oh no. Will Jimmy Harbs win a national championship before Ryan Day? No. And Next question. Says, I may be a sympath I may be a sympathizer for even asking. You're not a sympathizer for asking. I you're we again we're talking a lot about recently about like the, the five stages of acceptance, the five stages of mourning. You're you're in negotiation phase right now, and that's okay. It's okay. It's a process. You gotta work through it. Um but no. 
no, he, he, no, Michigan is not, no, 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 no. I would love nothing. I would love nothing, Kyle. Kyle, does it count as revenge? Does it count as revenge if Luke Fickle knocks off Michigan in the first round? Like, can, uh. can, no, now time out. This is a good question. Anyone who didn't stick around <laughs> for the sloop picks is sorry. Anyone who didn't tune in for the sloop picks is sorry. This is a good question. Can we count it as revenge? Can can we count it as, you know, Ohio State maybe kind of getting getting back, even if it's just a, at a fraction, if Luke Fickle knocks off Michigan? Because, like, it's still Luke Fickle, right? It's, it's Fickle's revenge for the one time when he was head coach, lost. This is his revenge to get that. Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. And, and you know what? Yeah. You, uh, Stuart, I think they can. I think since he can beat Michigan. Okay. All right. All right. Next question here we have from but Duncan. Just really stop and consider, Stuart, the amount of information and assistance and literally everything. Ryan Day is going to move to Cincinnati for the week if that happens. They're going to be on con Like, Ryan Day is going to be like, you want my coaching staff? Here's my coaching staff. Now, Luke Fickle might not want them. But <laughs> Ryan Day is going to offer every single piece of information he has at his disposal to Luke Fickle and crew should they meet up in the playoffs. Harbs is going to have to go against two coaching staffs. That's all I'm saying. All right. Duncan asked us, did Lincoln Riley duck the SEC? Yes. Absolutely. And did, but the, the, the rumors out there, the rumors out there are saying that he... He was not in favor at all, despised Oklahoma going to the SEC. And, and then he left. And then he left. I mean, that's that, he's going to have to deal with that. Whether it's true or not, whether Kyle and I think it's true or not, he's going to have to deal with that perception for a very long time. The guy who moved out west in order to I mean, I mean, not have to play in the SEC. You think about it. This is Oklahoma. It's a blue. Yeah. One of the bluest of bloods. It's one of the bluest team, blue blood teams. There you go. In college football. And he, he, and he treated Oklahoma like a stepping stool or a stepping stone to USC. Stool too. Like it's, there, there's the, something, there's, some, Ryan... there's something more to it. And that's why I kind of, I kind of believe these rumors that you're, that, we're reading here about he did not like the SEC. The only other thing I can think of is that he doesn't like what's going on behind the scenes with maybe with the AD or something else, but this makes more sense to it. So this is why I believe this more so because like <laughs> it's just, it just crazy just thinking that Oklahoma is a stepping stone. By, speaking of a blue blood being treated like a stepping stone, got Brian Kelly leaving Notre Dame to go to LSU. Yes. Notre Dame has a decent shot at making the playoffs and he left. Yes. Notre Dame has a real decent chance of making the playoffs and he left, but screw all that. Ohio state fans. I need you all to like, uh, I don't know if you pray, pray. If you don't pray, just think about it real hard. Just think about meditate on it. Uh, ask the universe, Ask, you know, light a candle. I don't, I don't, what, whatever it is you do to ask a higher power for a little bit of assistance. Marcus Freeman to Ohio State. Not happening. Why do you say that? Because we love recording at this time. Oh, no, no. Did something break? Um, it's going all over, but he's expected to be the next coach. At Notre Dame? Mm-hmm. Oh, Marcus congratulations. Freeman. No, I'm happy for him. No, I'm, 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 I love Marcus Freeman. I'm legitimately very happy for him. That's, that's fantastic. We still got Mike Tressel. <laughs> so, so here, here, here's the interesting thing. And by the way, there's to... officially Luke Fickle not being that's... distracted by the, um, by, by the Notre yeah. Dame job. And honestly, too, from a recruiting standpoint, this is this is great news for Ohio State fans. Because I mean, I don't you know think that's about, true. Hold on, hold on. Luke Fickle has such great relationships mm -hmm. 
with high school with the Ohio high school football. So does Marcus Freeman. Him going, well, I think Fickle more than Freeman. Freeman does, but I think Fickle has a much more has a deeper relationship with them. Him going to Notre Dame and the Notre Dame being able to take more of those Ohio kids going to Notre Dame. I think if you're trying to pick between Freeman and Fickle, I'd probably have Freeman from a recruiting standpoint in favor for favor for Ohio State. Yeah, but I think the I, I think maybe the the point you're dancing around and had you talked to talked about it a little bit longer, you may have got there yourself. This hurts Cincinnati bad. I think Notre Dame's going to start getting a lot of those second tier Ohio kids that Cincinnati's been living off of, you know, but, taking but from then, the Michigan states, the Indiana's, the Michigan's of the world. And by the way, not just the second tier Ohio kids. Marcus Freeman's already pulling first tier Ohio kids out of Ohio to go play for Notre Dame as the defensive coordinator. Now he's the head coach. This is bad news. This is bad news for Ohio State and Cincinnati and literally everyone else who recruits out of the Buckeye State. And Sparty. Sparty loves getting those kids. Too. And everyone else who recruits out of the Buckeye State. Yes. Yeah. But things may change here in the next few years, too, as Cincinnati joining the Big 12 here in a few years. Eh. Maybe we'll see a change. Cincinnati okay. also joined the Big East. Let's not forget, this is not the first time Cincinnati joined a power conference. Yeah. All right. Stewart asking us a question. Will the coaching carousel help us determine which program are stepping stones, i.e. Oklahoma? Yikes. I mean, that's, I feel bad for Oklahoma. That That's it. To be treated like that. To yeah. feel like you got the, I wonder if Bob it, Stoops it, it, is at all interested in coming back to coaching. Like he got a couple years off. He's going to come back mm-hmm. and coach the bowl game. Uh, one thing about Notre Dame, I wanted to go back real quick that I thought of, but forgot. And now I thought of it again. <laughs> like Notre Dame, just letting Brian Kelly go like that. That tells me that either one Brian Kelly wanted a long-term extension or like a raise essentially like seeing all these other coaches nearby like hey you got a 10 year you got a 10 year you get this big um bonus and all that and my guess is Notre Dame's like eh we got somebody else in waiting and just kind of let them go that's the only reason I can think of why Brian Kelly would leave I can think of a few more reasons but I don't want to spend well, any more time on it okay all right dinger Dinger asks, is it time to drop the early signing date for football recruitment considering the damage being done in the effort to get in a team's new coach seated before losing a class? I Well, you're, you're asking either the exact right or exact wrong people for this opinion because Kyle and I have never been in favor of it, of the early signing period from the day it was instated. We yeah. were against it. And... I've not seen anything ever to change my mind because not only do you have all of these kids who are now being forced to hurry up and move because they don't know where, you know, their head head coaches are moving. Kids are decommitting. It's now becoming this huge mad dash in order to giant to join a class in order to get there in time to do this and to do that and to not get left out of the class because now it's the, Early signing period was supposed to be an option, but it's turned into an obligation because, you know, kids are worried about the classes filling up and being left out in the cold. It's gone from option to obligation, and that that took about two years to happen. Like, everyone saw that coming. Yep. So, uh, the early signing period's garbage. It's always been garbage. It will continue to be garbage. But even worse than all of that that I just described and what is currently happening... Watch how many coaches move on December 16th. Watch how many coaches move and change positions on the 16th. And now the kids don't have an option to move and to change and to go somewhere else. The coach who recruited them will be off the freaking team, all out of the state maybe, before they even get there. 
It's crap. I hate the early signing period. It needs to die. Yes, agreed. All right, and who's your Buckeye Zach? Is the sky falling and the world ending with Buckeyes and Badgers not present in the Big Ten championship game? Yes. That's all I got. I got. I got a yes. Yes. Um, and then last question here from Stuart. Do you think Day's response to the third base comment will be verbal or retaliation? Retaliation. Yes, 100%. He's going to put 101 points. By the way, like, <laughs> I'm just throwing this out there. Third base. If Ryan Day wants it to be, that third base comment could easily become the new little brother comment. Mike Hart opens his mouth after a win over Michigan State, and no one's forgot about it since, and it's become a rallying cry for Michigan State. Now see what happens. Yep. Now see what happens, Jimmy. See what happens now, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. We don't forget. All right, Jared. That is all the questions we have for today's episode. That was a good episode. I'd I'm like not going to lie. I Enjoyed felt like that it. was a good episode. All right. Uh, that is it. That's the end of our episode. I um, want to encourage everyone to come join a Discord server. want to encourage uh, people, please join the Patreon. Uh, lost a sponsor recently. Um, could, could, could use a bit of, uh, you know, it's the end of the season. Sponsors drop off. No big deal. But, you know, we, we could use some additional assistance. And you it, you could do so for just three dollars, uh, three dollars a month. That's that's kind of not a big deal. And if you don't want a monthly payment, you can do the entire year up front, save a few bucks. Uh, I think it comes out to like thirty two fifty or something like that. I forget. Um, that might be before tax, though. I forget. I forget. I forget. I haven't I haven't signed up to my own Patreon in a long time, guys. OK, I don't remember. But point is, is that. Uh, we, we could use a, a little bit of help, a little bit of love over here. Uh, also, if you're maybe looking to sponsor a podcast, if you're looking to uh, buy some advertising space, also maybe let us know. Uh, just just hit us up, sloopcast at gmail.com. Um, and Kyle, that's it. That's all I have to say. Uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner or did we uh, bleed this stone dry? I think you did, or we did. But just the next Buckeye basketball game, this Sunday, 7.30, as they take on Not Our Rival. All right. There you are. Uh, Kyle, tonight's ending music will be the band Courtney from work. They are, since, since your Saturday evening just became free, your Saturday evening's free now. Go see Courtney from work. They're playing at the Roomba Cafe um, north of campus. North of campus, the Roomba Cafe. Um I'm going to play a song for you now. They're excellent. They're very, very entertaining live. So I recommend you go check them out again. That is Saturday night, this Saturday night at the Roomba cafe, Columbus, Ohio, just North of campus. Uh, and with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Kyle, once again, this is Courtney from work. Mm -hmm.